Hello, students. If you are here for introduction to deep learning, you are at the right place. As usual, we are going to work on answers time, which is we'll give it one or two minutes later. Uh, start, give it one or two minutes for people to come in late. If anything, can you hear me online? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. If while you are while we just give them time. Oh, captions. Okay, so the caption is heard. Perfect. Okay, that's okay. So while we wait for this, I want you to do one thing. Yes, I had told you this last week, and I hope you did, which is, can you go to spivers.org and create an account, please? Create account. I, Mike, do you know if this is like immediate, immediate approval? No, right? It takes time. So let me ask if any of the boys are online. <laughs> Okay, I'm assuming you all have the Cybers account, at least you submitted for it, and I'm gonna ask the team to approve it now. So that is good. So while we wait for that approval, let's get started with our class. So Meg, any idea why this machine doesn't show me the terminal? This machine, do you know what that's connected to? No, here, um, here. Can you check what the input is coming from that? Okay, so we are working on introduction to deep learning. I think this is its own PC, so. No, last time I took it out for something. It's even to see, but I am, you know, where is the input coming from? I think that's the one. That's the one and that is one. HDMI. All right, never mind. I'll, I'll just look up here. Okay, all good. So introduction to deep learning. We, if this is your first time, we meet on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Today is Thursday at 3 p.m. Just confirming at Science and Engineering Library or online where you all are right now. So last week or in the previous weeks, we had seen one thing was we took a model and trained it end to end on Colab. If you remember, we could not finish it because it showed us like a couple of hours of training. And the week after, which was last week, we tried creating our own GPT APIs and tried calling it. And we found out that it's very costly if you run out of your free quota at which they give you at the beginning. So you can see where we are hitting all these roadblocks, right? So we all want to learn this large language model and even try to train it locally, but it is not possible for a common man to do it. So let me give an example. <clears throat> so last week, we had two or three weeks ago, uh, where is it? Long window, long window, long window. Okay, so if you go to the DL workshops, where we usually store all our lectures, we saw, we first that did this, which was your, uh, I think I call it fine tune, should change that name. It is the one where we tried basic prediction and things. And then there was lecture intro to GPT. This is the one where we did the API access last week. Let's see, open in Colab. We're gonna run, run time, run all. Oh. We can even go, let's say, give it the best change runtime type, give it the biggest GPU, save, 
runtime run all, not authored by Google. Let that keep running. Too many sessions, manage sessions. Right. I already have stuff running there. Sessions, runtime run all. Let that run there. I'm gonna meanwhile go find where we did the MRPC one, not here. Here. All right, full training MRPC that was lecture three. Open in Colab. And here also I am going to oh, sorry, change runtime type, give it the T4 GPU and Python 3 is good. And this is the code if we saw again. Ta-da. Close. Time on. All right. So yeah, what is going on? I probably had open stuff somewhere. But anyway, if you remember what happened last time was we tried running this and we ran into the issue that we eventually, we uh, when we had our number of epochs, so here, remember the number of epochs. So we gave it like three epochs and it probably finished training in front of us. But in reality, you need to run it for at least 100 epochs. But the moment you do that here, it will show you possibly a couple of days. Like, okay, it's this one shows, well, uh, the two hour 39 minutes was for three epochs itself. So remember, we are giving it the highest amount of hardware, which we as a common man can get free, but still it's gonna cost you, and we'll wait for this to run, but I'll, I'll assure you this will show up like three or four days or 350 hours of training. Right, and meanwhile, we had the other problem, which was when we went to the UA Data Lab, we did intro to GPT, V2 API access. Yeah, okay, so this was the one where I was telling you, hey, this, my key is invalid because I don't have any money left. So my bottom line being, one way or the other, we are restricted either money-wise or hardware-wise to train our GPUs. Okay, is there somebody watching chat? I should be watching chat. Uh, is that you all? Oh, Mega, it's you. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, so let me continue. So yeah, so which is why I wanted you wanted to introduce you to Cyverse. So I hope you guys have an account in Cyverse already or somebody has approved it. I had asked you last week and I have asked the support team to approve it. Hopefully they will approve. While they do that, let me at least show a demo of what Cyverse is. So let me log out and then log in again. So you have to type DE, which is a discovery environment, cyverse.org. Come here, login, the login that you just made. And this is recorded, so you all can come back and look at it anyway. I'm gonna cancel some of my existing things. So from here, you should go to this thing here called apps. And Cyverse, like I mentioned, has a lot of these heavy artillery, like big machines. And you as a student of University of Arizona is getting it for free. For the last 10 years, it was not, even though it was created here, it was used by National Science Foundation. But finally, they said, it's okay. Let's try making it free for the students of the same university which created it. So which is why we come here. This is um, de.cyverse.org. We clicked on apps. Then let's pick, I don't know, let's maybe something Jupyter Lab data science. So it's all of these are pre-built Jupyter Labs, which a bunch of things install. So it doesn't really matter what you pick as long as you know how to run your LLM, uh, run your own Fonda install and stuff. But for the sake of today's class, let's pick LLM training end to end. Next. Meanwhile, let me move this guy here so that I can keep an eye on where the other training is running. One more, this guy, I'm down to my other screen. Goes when it, all right. 
Okay, so let's continue with Cyverse, right? So Cyverse here, when we go here, you can actually choose the sheer amount of 128 cores. You can get 250 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of gigabyte, gigs of hard disk. I clicked on the data science one. Um, you, like I said, you, you can we go here, click on apps, click on Jupyter Lab data science. Do not everybody has access to it, is it in publicly? Do you guys have no? It doesn't show you. Sorry, it doesn't show it to you, right? What do you have? Does it show anything? But okay, so, um, Carlos. When they log in to very first time, they don't get to see any of the apps or notebooks, is it? Um, can you check them? Like they don't have, and let me keep an eye on the chat window also, meanwhile. Um, Carlos, can you say that in the chat where people are also watching like I, if you can instruct me where to go at this screen is shared how if you're a first time user where do they go they it's a, i don't have it here so it's, they go to the the, the yeah. apps apps okay yeah and then you should have give there my public apps nope yep. featured apps okay Let me check. Yeah, I see apps, but when I try to open with this request access, it has me write a summary of why I want access, which is exactly why I wanted you guys to do it last week, which so that you can write, you're from this class, I um, just ask for a request. It'll, yeah, request access within one or two days. Yeah, you might have to request access. Yeah, so when they connect, they need to launch the discovery environment. Yeah, they need to get an access for that, right? Not just the account, but they need to request mm -hmm. for access. Okay. When you go in, uh -huh. you have to select what you see. So I go to the cybers. Where do I go after this? Apps? Let, let, log out. Log out, okay. Log out and go to cyber. The cybers, okay. Log in. Don't they? Up there. Sign up, log in. Ah, okay. Login. login, okay. And then login. Login, okay. So this is the one they would have approved yes, it. And then ah. you have anything. You have to go down to discover environment. And this one? Launch it. Yeah. Launch. Launch. Sorry. Launch. Yeah. Then. Mm, okay. So all this is preset for me and I didn't. So then you can see the apps, is it? Click on the apps and they should be able to see all this by default. Can you guys see it? I'm now okay. Perfect. So let's go back to what we were doing. We created our own app. It's called an app. It's just a uh, liberal interpretation of the word app. More importantly, it's it's giving you a virtual machine. Pick whatever size you want, and click launch analysis. It's a little deceiving analysis, which is because this was originally created for uh, the for very specific for, for research. Did it work for you when you click launch analysis? Okay, so apparently I cannot get it. <laughs> Request access fail, go back to Jupyter Lab Data Science. Um, aha, oh, two windows, it doesn't like me in two windows. Interesting, Jupyter Data Line Science. Next, minimum CPU cores. Minimum disk space, I'm gonna make it the maximum disk space. Launch analysis. All right, it's launching something. And then you click on go to analysis. If you click on go to analysis, it will take you to exactly a window just like Colab, or it's even much more powerful than Colab. While we wait for that to load, let me show you the. Yeah, so this is the full training for we were trying to do it here. Um, I ran it for num underscore epochs, num underscore epochs equal to 100, so epochs is 100. And here, as you can see, it's 100. 
and the machine is kind of lost completely because at this point it cannot even say like how long is it going to take it's probably keep, going to keep running for days so which is why i was saying we probably need to work on a something like a cyverse which is more powerful um so let's see Jupyter data science i never used this before so i'm just going to go back and use my own thing that i'm familiar with so discovery environment it'll launching it'll take a second okay so it's because i recently haven't i never used this app before Okay, while we do that, I can just show them what I, in one of the something which I am, I have been using, right? Just same thing. I know, but they, it's okay. I want to end up at the same window faster. Yeah, launching. I did. I think we just, all of us together just crashed yeah. it. Is he? Launching. Okay, so the other one is still 20. That's why I was asking. Okay, 60 plus. Okay. Okay, I have a window like this. Did anybody else get a window like this? Or if it's still... Okay, so did we see if that is stuck? We, this is when we, is it stuck for you? Yeah, how do I close it, so, um, Carlos? If it's stuck, just go back. How do you close it? Go back to analysis and do it again. Jupyter lab data. All right, close it again. Go to analysis, close it, terminate, start again. So this should, I should still have it here. Click on this again. Don't they? Uh, yeah, so let me go back to the app. Same thing, right? Oh, I can only launch one at a time, is it? Next, launch analysis. Yeah, go to analysis. It's probably going to go. No. Nope. <laughs> okay, wait. So while that wait, let, let me at least show you what works already. So once that loads up, it should look like this, which is now collab, but it is... You, you will be given all this window like it's jupiter julia r r studio terminal so in short this is a very powerful virtual machine that in which you can access all these terminals so what i have done here is i went to the ua data lab and went to the same code we were looking at earlier which was uh, i think it was three right where we are training end-to-end -end rpc yeah, this MRPC was the name of the data set. I'm going to download this file. Go back here. Once you log in, you should be able to get into one of the folders. You can create your own folders. I have created something called Intro to D Data Lab. Um, I already uploaded this. I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to upload this again. This one, upload full MPC training, MRPC training. Yeah, I think uh, the cybers approval takes a day or two, which is why I had asked you guys to do it last week. But now that this is recorded, we can always go back to it. So let's see what's their full training MRPC. So it's exactly the same code. And this time, I'm just gonna clear all the outputs. Also, you must one thing you must remember is this is uh, this is not just one machine. This is like a ton of virtual machines all working together. So it takes a little time to respond because this is sitting on something known as um, distributed file system. So there's your file system is not in one machine. It's spread across all around the U.S. or maybe in this case all around Tucson. So if sometimes it does it takes time, please bear with it. Other than that, once you get this running, so let's start run all, run all cells. And let's see, where is your num underscore epochs? 
let's make that 100 terminals. All right, so this is going to install all this. We'll have to probably give it a second. Kernel, interrupt kernel, kernel, restart kernel, restart. Kernel, run all, run all, run all, no, run, run all, run, run all cells, okay. Yeah, so we probably will have to wait and see only because this is the first time we are loading it in Cyverse, but this is exactly like Colab, but more powerful. This is essentially a high performance cluster with ability to have things like this, like Jupyter Notebooks, R, R Studio, and you can even, you have, it's a, almost like an operating system in itself, but now it's a personal for you, personal operating system for you. And you don't have to connect to HPC, the high performance cluster we have, because that is only command line. I don't know if they have a user interface. So let's see, how far did this go? All right, it's gone here. Look at this, look at the speed at which this is training, right? 100 data set, Colab guy was stuck. He had no idea what's going on. And this one is already showing you some less numbers. Clearly this, even this takes more uh, one hour, but remember, we did not pick a C GPU for this, which again, you have to apply for the access a week ago. So GPU, once you get the GPU access also, this will be still smaller. So anyway, the reason I spent some time on this is because you need to be aware we have this huge beast, a gargantuan system sitting here with us. You can choose any number, any number of the, you know, the, um, the hardware like we did here. And now, Ta-da, you have all this in your fingertips. So go play with it, right? So maybe when I started this one, I had not given it the highest amount of GPUs. I can probably do that again, but you see what I'm where I'm going with that, right? So this is very powerful. It's free for you to use it. Now, finally, we'll get today's class. So today's class is about building a chatbot, right? You build your own chatbot. And let's see how to do that. So go back to the same uh, thing called lecture five chatbot over LLM. Click on Llama chatbot. And this was the other thing I had asked you to get Llama. So let me open in Colab. And as usual, I'm gonna go file new notebook. Let's see if it's probably has stopped my other sessions. Leave. Yeah, this guy is completely lost. He has no idea how long it's gonna take. So I have to shut this down. Just close it, it'll probably just go. There you go. Close and we are as usual going to start a new window. Okay, so this time, same thing. What is the first thing we install? Transformers. Okay, it's gonna take a few seconds to install. If you are done with this, you're on Colab. Yeah, we can probably even do this on hugging, um, on what is the thing called? Cyphers. So I am assuming you all have a hugging face login already. If you do this, which is hugging face dash CLI login, it's gonna ask you for a token. It'll give you this link here where your hugging face token is kept. Click on it. So if you go to, let's say, if you go to Hugging Face, you're logged in, click on your profile. Go down to uh, Edit Profile, Access Tokens. So here, show, this is my access token. I'm gonna copy that, take it back here, paste my token. And now you have, okay, so say no for the Git credential. So now you have logged into Hugging Face from the command line. There are a few more things we need to install before we start. The first thing is Torch or PyTorch. Uh, PyTorch is the framework on which all these machine learning tools are written. 
This is a very powerful machine learning framework, specifically deep learning framework. And this was developed by Sumit Chantala in at Meta a couple of like five, 10 years ago. And now it's become an open source project. So we need to install Torch. So let's do this Torch. Another thing we want I want you to install is Accelerate to install. So Accelerate is a nice package which, which helps you accelerate, literally. It's created for PyTorch users, and it will really help you use, if you're using GPU, TPU, et cetera, you can go, you, you can use that to accelerate it. So that reminded me we need to ask for a T4 GPU. Okay, so it's saying, do you want to delete it? Sure. Again, same story. Ta-da. Ta-da. Nope. Maybe we should run this straight on Cybers. All right, so we have one more thing which we need, which is the called Gradio. Now, anytime I tell you something new, what do we do? We go to clip install Gradio, and what is this? So Gradio is this nice chat window it provides. So on top of any of your LLMs. So remember, all this while we were chatting with LLMs from command line, but we never had this front end like a chat window. So with Gradio, you can install all that. Let's see if work, work, work. While it does that, I am gonna go check what happened to the cybers. Okay, let's see. I'm assuming you guys are following me there, so we'll give it a second to install. Yeah, I'm not watching the chat window, at least not consistently, so please ask questions. Unmute yourself and ask questions. Meg, are you keeping an eye on the chat window? Okay, perfect. Are you posting all the links? Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're awesome. Okay, that worked. No, this so this notebook is already saved. Remember, it's it was there in our um, UA data lab when we went there. So we went to DL workshops. That was a UA data lab DL workshop repository. You go to chatbot over LLM, and here we have the code for it. It's already there, Llama chatbot. We are just going step by step on this. So for the sake of live coding, I'm just doing it in a new window. That's it. Yeah. Or oh, the name like untitled. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is like a live window that you're code we are coding on. Okay. So I think we have everything we need right now. We are gonna start coding. Second, I am going to see what happened to the stuff we were running on Spyverse, or you can probably go back and check what happened to it. So I have this heavy GPU thingy already in my account, which you can probably request. I'm going to hit it with all this stuff. Max hit. Cancel this. Let's keep running that guy in the background. Launch analysis again. Go to analysis and all right, it doesn't matter. Your question, sorry, yeah. How do you what? Oh yeah, so in the in the other page, how do you input token? So did you do this hugging face CLI login? What did you get? Okay, so then there's you have to click next to the token. There's a small right space. If you click on it, it'll show up. There's a small text window in input text box. It's asking. Okay, so let's run this again. Here, right? You're not seeing this window. Interesting. Okay, can you check? And the other thing was, um, do you see this link? Do you have a token? In okay, it's interesting why you don't see a window. Do you guys see it? Yeah, it's not. 
click. Are you guys able to click on the hugging face? Oh, sorry, on the collab. Ah, on Cybers, no, hold on. We we haven't reached Cybers on that. We are still using collab for this. And there is a reason which is, we don't know if all this is integrated with Cybers. I haven't tested it yet. But today, I my goal is introduce you to introduce you to Cybers, yes. Then introduce you to the ch creating a chatbot yourself, and then we will run this on Cybers eventually. So if you are on if you are on Colab, you should be fine. Let's stick to Colab for now. So I am asking you to log in again, or at least don't have to log in. I have to log in because I just ran this again. You don't have to add it as a grid credential. Login successful. Okay. You know, we are switching. I just wanted to rerun this and see how long it takes. So let's go to our intro to DL and Cybers, which I created, full training. All right, just go run, run all cells. Okay, just had to leave it there because the previous one got shut down. I'll leave it on my other window. Let's go back to what we were doing, which is let's go back and build a chatbot. All right, so now that you are back here, Okay, let me try logging on Cybers. That might be funny. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Cybers in a second. I will run this on Cybers, but for this I know will work because it's on Colab. I don't wanna walk into Cybers at this point and, so, and check what happened. We'll do that together. But now if you want to check, if you're logged in, just do hugging face CLI, who am I? It'll tell you who this is, who you are, right? Well, existential philosophy. If you ever felt lost in life, just go ask hugging face, who am I? Okay, so let's start. From transformers, as usual, we import the auto tokenizer. And this time we need a model and the model we are going to use is we go to hugging face, hugging face slash models, and we search for llama. So if you are doing this for the first time, it tells, it's possible that it's going to ask you to create an account on llama and download the model. It doesn't show me that anymore because I already have it. So I'm just going to take one of these big models, meta dash llama, which is coming from meta slash always Facebook. And we copy Llama here, okay? And now the tokenizer, if you remember last week, we did tokenizer equals auto tokenizer dot from pre-trained. Now we are using the same model for the tokenizer. And this time we need to use the authentication token because the first time if you want uh, to use the hugging face model for Llama, you need to have the token. That's why we were passing earlier the token. Right? So I'm assuming you did that last week, got the Llama set up. Okay, so we have the Llama ready to run for at least for tokenizer, right? We haven't started the model yet. As if, like before, we'll do some transformers, import pipeline. We also need torch today for the PyTorch. And we're gonna create our own pipeline this time. So we, we done this earlier, pipeline of, we are gonna use text generation because we are building a chatbot. Gonna give it the model equal to model. So it, remember when, if you are in doubt, you don't know what pipeline does, go to Google, say hugging face, Oh, slash pipeline class. Click on pipeline. We can go find what this pipeline is probably like click on it. If we go to the corresponding class, if we can find it, you will realize that uh, pipeline class has all these things which we need. Let's see if it's pipeline class GitHub hugging face. Yep, hugging face pipeline text generations so if you're familiar with um, python this is always how you should do like there won't be 
and you, nobody's going to come tell you why why this class is going to use like in fact if you look at their tutorial they'll just, just say hey import pipeline and these are the commands you should give which is name of the model and the type if you remember earlier we were using things like sentiment analysis right and now instead we are using text generation the model is model we need to put what we call torch data type for torch because it likes to have its own float pointer so that is float 16 torch underscore data type and oh there you go finally it is showing up um so it has it's expecting device underscore map question sorry yeah, the question is Installing Llama. Okay, what is the question? Let me see. Uh, install Llama from Meta's request link. We looked into my native Python, not for hugging face. So I cannot access via hugging face, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I think you have to get it. I forgot how I did this long time ago. Um, hugging face, Llama access. I think you need the so first you need to get access for Llama and use it in your hugging face login. So I was assuming you guys did this last week or yeah. okay so if you're use if you're logging in for the first time from hugging face using llama it asked for the login here I, if i remember correctly and my hugging face already knows what my login is so that's why it's letting me do this let's try running this in any way uh -uh. we should really really try this on cybers Run time, run all. Sorry, long window, wrong window. That's what happened. I have different terminals. Great. Untitled 13, run time, run all. Many sessions, terminate other sessions. Terminate everything else, go back, run time, and run all. Yeah, this is for today's workshop. We need Llama access, which is why I had mentioned this a couple of times across last weeks. Like, if you don't haven't done it, you go to Llama or Llama Meta.com, ask request for access. They'll give you access. You don't have to download the model. You have to come back to the Hugging Face pipeline, use the same code, and it will ask you when you give it model and we call the model using tokenizer, it's going to ask you, hey, what's your Llama login? I think if I remember correctly. So we have to go back again, copy my token because we ran this from top. Nope. All right, login successful. Just confirm it's me. Tokenizer. Loading up from Transformers import pipeline. As usual, why am I not surprised? I missed something. Is it? It's not called pipeline. Pipeline. P I P L I N E. What's the error? Error is that our device map requires accelerate pip install accelerate. Should we thought we already did pip install? Nope. I don't know where that went. Pip install accelerate. Okay. Okay, so this is why we had specifically asked for the device uh, underscore auto, and let's see if that runs this time. Nope. Low memory usage or device map request accelerate. It's up. Oh, restart kernel. Runtime. It doesn't remember you installed it, so you have to restart the kernel. Sorry. Question. Um, so it's not download, right? You're installing it. It's just like Colab. You're installing it in your file. So the question here was on Cyverse, how do we find out where our our downloaded packets are, right? So let's see. Let me see if I can pull that back up. Where did that go? Should not have so many windows. Okay, let's go back to the cybers where's that window 
all right here it's still oh it finished training no nope, almost it's one hour but okay so yeah if you want to see where everything you downloaded went now you can actually open a terminal just like a linux machine check ls and it's most likely going inside a conda environment if you are created one so it's it's on base so let's see um a list maybe so it's exactly same like this it's a question which you are asking is in hugging face or sorry in colab when we were installing stuff where did all this go it's exactly same like colab it just gave you a virtual machine it spun up a terminal and here it's sitting inside some sort of a virtual environment it could be using venv or conda and even cybers uses this internally Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're trying to download the whole model in in the same code in Cyverse itself, right? Or oh, the Llama one? Ah, Mistral. Okay, Mistral is... So if you guys are not familiar with right now, the best open source model is Mistral. It's even better than Llama. It has 7 billion. It's slightly more bigger than um, what we are using. So... Yeah, this is at par with ChatGPT or GPT 4.0. In fact, there's something called Mixtrel, which just came out of uh, came out of the same group, Mistral, which is named after a wind in France. Mixtrel is the mix is the beast. Like it has eight of the same models running together. So my point being, if you were running this on Cybers, you can probably afford to call. Um, Mixtrel or Mistral. Actually, we tried Mixtrel and Cyvers blew up. So that's even big for Cyvers. So maybe try Mistral. Once you get access to Cyvers, try Mixtrel. All right. What is this wrong? What's wrong with this guy? Hello, maybe you're Weird. Yeah. What using low CPU memory is true, or device map requires accelerate, and it doesn't remember. I just installed accelerate. Very smart. Let's go back to the original code, which we had on GitHub. Open in Colab. That worked. All right, one time run all. Da -da 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 -da. Same story, one time run all. Which is why sometimes I don't like using the Colab because you cannot even debug or understand why it's complaining. Cybers, at least you are in, in, importing it. And while we do that, I am now curious if our code will run on Cybers, the Llama code. So let's go to Cybers also. Where is that? Too many windows. Oh, it's here. Okay. I don't actually right. right. This is the cybers we were looking at. We can go back here and I actually uploaded this already, the Llama chatbot. I'll just let it run. Run all cells. And while it does that, we go check if our guy worked. Da -da 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 -da. Nope, it's downloading the model again. Did anybody work? Anybody work anywhere? Cybers working, hugging face logging. Okay, finally, that's progress. So if if Cyverse returns faster than Colab, now we have the reason for, um, what did you say it was minus minus token, is it? How did you put this? And put the token here? Okay, perfect. So, as you can see, at this point, it's a struggle between which model has more capacity or which one is going to log faster. This is standard. Like it's your, it's happening always when you try anything in hugging phase because sooner or sooner or later you are going to encounter these huge models. And now we need to scale up our hardware for that. Okay. run selected cell and below. Okay, that went through, this went through. This is downloading the models. 
Okay. Aha, uh -huh. nice. So it's this guy is 9.98 gigs. It says 31 seconds. Where does this guy go? 9.9 .9 gigs, 29. Wait, is that minutes? That's still seconds. Okay. Now we are letting them fight each other. Whoever wins will take the guy. So on one side, we have Cybers. On the other side, we have Colab. Both of them working parallelly. Welcome to tuning deep learning models. In my PhD thesis, it took me like a whole week just to run the whole training. By the, and it was in Python, by the way. That's why I hate Python. It ran for whole weeks or seven days and said, oh, you forgot to put a price there. I'm like, all right, great. A week is gone, so which is why I hate working on Python and deep learning. Everybody uses it. Scala. Scala is the most powerful language. And the only other language I have found which is better than Scala is Go. Go from Google. OK, so as expected, Cybers was faster. So let's. So now that we are almost out of time, I'm just going to explain what these things do. Cybers itself. System prompt, what we are doing is we are starting with, remember, when we were talking to open AI, we always use, hey, you are a helpful bot. Your answers are clear and concise. It's literally like a therapist talking to you. Hey, you are a nice boy. You better give the right answers. Believe it or not, it works. Your, it's, its answers are precise. The large language models, they are precise if you are nice to them. So be nice to the language models. They are probably memorizing you. They're, 10 years later, you ask for something. It's like, this guy did not say thank you in 2024. OK, so the next code here, what it does is format the message, which is the message we are giving it needs to be formatted in a particular format, which the way Llama likes it, or in this case, um, the hugging face wrapper, the way it likes it. So the way it does here is we we have, oh, there's a concept called history. So history is basically saying, let's say you're chatting with a chatbot and you had 10 questions asked on the same topic, but at the 11th question, you asked a question about the first question again. So history, we always try to make sure it's bigger than the memory limit, which simply means your chatbot should be able to go back and look at all the questions you asked it in this session. So it, this is like an error check, null check for length of history. Formatted message at the end of the day is combining system prompt, which is, hey, you are a helpful bot. Your answers are clear and concise. And we give it the history of zero, zero, and which is my previous question and the question before that. And this is the one where I was saying you format this whole message into one single string and you return the formatted message. So we'll use that function in a second. Get llama response is another function where they take the formatted message, right? We call format underscore message. Take the, we take the formatted message function. That becomes a query. And that query is, we are going to pass that query into response here, like including sequences. So this is all like boilerplate code, which if you remember, we were trying to write the pipeline earlier, the Llama pipeline. We are giving it query. Okay, so Llama pipeline query, and we give it do sample, which means let's go and take a sample from all the questions you saw so far. Give me that look, this is my history, top K is 10. Just if I ask you a question beyond the 10 qu questions I gave you clues on, it won't answer from it. Return sequences, EOS token, this is all standard stuff. Max length is 1024, which means your tokens or the number of words you use should not be beyond 1024. Common man doesn't speak, speak sentences which has 1,000 words in it hopefully, unless you're J.R.R. Tolkien or something. Generated text, so we're gonna generate the text and we get it in response. And now we have a chatbot response, right? So this will not work on Gradio. Uh, the Gradio part is essentially the chatbot. 
See, remember, until here, we got the response from chatbot. So we are, go we are doing good. Let's see if, if we can print this guy. Return response, print chatbot response, no idea. Now this won't work because remember, you don't have an access to a GUI. It still is a Linux machine, which is probably we need this exposed here. I'm gonna click on this. Nope, that's my machine, Cybers. Getting complicated, so we are going back to Colab. Ta-da! Very smart. All right, so Colab, we ran the whole thing. Oh, yeah, the chat button. See, ta-da, ta-da, ta-da! You have a query. Hello, chatbot. You have a chatbot right in your hand. Okay, so this is a share. It even gives you a share link. You can click on the share share link. It's open for seventy two hours. So there you go. So let's ask questions. What day is it today? Thank you for the kind words. Today is March 17th. Clearly not. Okay. Where is Tucson, Arizona? So now we are walking into the world of LLMs and what it knows, which is a big discussion in itself. So it depends on where LLM, this one, uh, this large language model Llama was trained. Tucson is a city located in the state of Arizona and Southwest United States. Okay, good. So this is just like your own personal free chatbot at this point. It's at par with GPT. So let's ask crazy questions. What is the meaning of life? Yeah, so the reason why we could not access this in Cyverse is this interface is connecting to Gradio, the Gradio server, which doesn't have access to Cyverse, or Cyverse won't let you connect to a random IP address outside. So which is why we are in Colab. Doable, definitely doable, need to work on with the Cyverse team. So, hey, I think we even made the guy hang up. What is meaning of life? Clearly, it doesn't have any idea. All right, all right, meaning of life is a question that has puzzled philosophers, blah, blah, blah. All right, religious or spiritual perspective, cool. So yeah, you have your own personal chatbot. Now tomorrow, if you want to, let's go try a new model, hugging face models. And like I said, if you want Mistral, Mistral is gonna probably blow up everything. Let's just use Mistral. Copy paste this link, go back to your original page. The only thing you need to change is the link. Donde estas la linka? Linka? Franca? Okay, there you go. Instead of model, we are going to call this Mistral, so it's a more powerful model. Run time, run after. Everything from this cell below, run again. Tokens, we saw all this, right? Create a tokenizer, get tokens out of it. We are same, getting the same thing which we have been using from the very first class, which is pipeline, which is why I introduced you to Hugging Face Pipeline. And you pass it the same model. This time it's downloading the model again. Okay, maybe that will be a better answer for this. What? So what day is it today? Let's, what's a good question to ask? You tell me a question or you have your own chatbot. You should probably ask the question if you have chatbot. Complex question. What is your name, Nick? Where does Nick study? I don't have access to personal information. Fair. So what's your name, Doreen? Green study. Probably gonna say the same reply. I'm just wasting time until this guy loads. Okay. So I apologize. Oh, even this guy is responding. Cool. It's all connected to the same interface. Very interesting. Okay. But sorry. So maybe we should ask the chat thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're walking into a very interesting territory. You want to type just in case liability wise it doesn't come to you. What do you think of University of Arizona's financial issues? All right, all right. I hope the big brother is not watching. 
probably has no idea. It's probably trained on something which was downloaded a month ago, which what year two, right? So yeah. Yeah, welcome to deep learning world. Most of your time is spent waiting. Um, let's see, I'm just an AI, don't have access to real time information. I can't even see, what is this? Any particular institution? <laughs> no liability, this is very smart. Ah, see, as according to the university's most recent financial report has experienced a decline in state funding, okay. It's not hallucinating, right? It's saying, okay, Okay, it did have the final state decline state funding. University has taken steps to address it. Oh, so like I so remember I said these models hallucinate a lot, which simply means if it doesn't know the answer, it, it'll just make up something. While our model doesn't. Welcome to something we developed here at University of Arizona. I'm gonna shamelessly show this again. So are we going to be fine tuning this model with our own data? Yes. So the definition of fine tuning usually is, so at least five years ago, the definition of fine tuning was, let's take this big model, rerun it or retrain it again. So remember this models, model is already trained for a general purpose. It understands what classification is. It understands what sentiment analysis is. And we retrain it on our particular data set. But five years later, which is present, we can't even get this to train, like can't even download this, a trained model. So imagine retraining this. So it's you or me, even Cyverse doesn't have resources to train Mistral or Llama. So what people did was we, they invented something known as retrieval augmented generation, and which is what we are gonna see in this class, maybe next class or the one after that. So you can meanwhile read on retrieval augmented generation. Let's see, R-A-G, Retrieval augmented generation. The idea is simple. It's just that instead of retraining, what we do now is ta-da, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. All right. We give it simply a library of books. Or in other words, let's say you have a rare disease data set, and this is your original question going to LLM. Now we redirect it simply to go to a library or a books or a database on this particular, let's say your rare diseases. And this retrieval takes few seconds because we don't have to retrain the whole thing. And now it just retrieves the, let's say the page from a textbook on rare diseases, or even in your database of rare diseases, it finds this details, combines it with your question and sends it again, the actual chatbot, which then replies. Um, and I was saying in this, our chatbot, um, currently, if we ask it questions like what, so this is trained on Cyverse documents. Like this is also a nice place if you wanna learn about Cyverse, um, you can just go where, oh, now that you all have Cyverse account, you should try logging to chatur-dev because if you have, um, you, should, you, should, you should be able to log in with that, with your Cyverse account. So where do I learn more about Cyverse? Okay, start by getting a quick overview, Cyverse platform, et cetera. Now I'm gonna ask, where do I learn about university life? Now our model is smart enough that it says, nope, we cannot answer because we, it's, it's nicely put in a boundary that it won't, it'll say you don't know. So it's not allowed to hallucinate. So let's go back to what we are doing. We loaded Llama, we loaded another window. Remember the first window was University of Arizona. Okay, let's ask what the day, what day is it today again? But remember this time it's on a new model known as Mistral. What day is it today? Error, why? Error, okay. Let's see what's going on here. Maybe I'm suspecting the machine is not able to load that big model. It's gonna check. No, I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, so my guess is this model is so huge that the virtual machine which was allocated by Llama or Colab is not able to load Mistral. 
but look at what? Here. Out of RAM. Okay, perfect. There you go. That is the answer. So, which is why it's almost answer to Katie's question. Like, we can't even get this model to load, let alone train it. Like, how do we? How does a common man do it? So, I think, on the other hand, Llama was able to load it. Remember, it just didn't have access to the Gradio server. So, sorry, not Llama. Cybers. Cybers is definitely better. It's giving you what two fifty gigs of memory as opposed to. Here, you're getting what, 19 gigs, right? You're getting 12 gigs, right, maximum. So, which is welcome to Cybers. And I will leave you guys here for today. Go home and play with it. And maybe I'll talk to Cybers guys and open a port for talking to the radio server. And we can start launching our own personal chatbots in Cybers itself. And next class onwards, I'm going to try running everything in Cybers. So remember, I started teaching you Colab because that is the complex thing or the worst thing. So now we are optimizing on it. Okay, here's a better way to run. You can train your models. Okay, any other question? Troubleshooting cybers. So I, I'm going to get a cybers expert. Last time we did this course, we got a cybers expert for one hour to speak and this time I thought, hey, I'm smart. I should be able to do that and clearly not. So yeah, we'll get a complete Cybers demo. Okay, so it took 15 minutes to get this particular thing approved. Yeah, you're you're lucky because there's somebody sitting there at the customer support and they approved it. So usually it takes a week. However, now it says what? Launching wise, Jupyter Data Lab, uh, failed to find a host. Yeah, okay, so this is the other thing which, um, Christopher, I'm looking at your comments on the chat window. So you had, I don't know if anyone, any of you encountered. So now when you are a free user, you don't always get the highest or the best machines like 250 gigs, but then it's a matter of you writing a piece of uh, paragraph saying, hey, you are really in this class, which needs you to really have to use these machines and they will allocate it to you. So surely there are checks and balances so that not everyone who accesses it, accesses it. I thought I remember the story where we had people accessing from somewhere in Africa and overloading the cybers. So at the when you simply ask for the very first user, you won't have access to a lot of big machines, but you will at least get the minimum machines. Um, but you can request access. So sharing this with the cybers team, yeah. Did trouble um, did the troubleshooting tip and relaunching work? Did I miss yes. that tip? Oh, the one how to uh, open de.cybers, right? Okay. Yes. Gmail account, it registered. Ah, Gmail. Gmail account registration won't work. So you have to use an Arizona.edu for cybers. Because remember, it was created here, and we are giving access only to University of Arizona students as of now for free. Okay, um, so another recommendation is you all should join the UA data Slack. Can you paste a link for that? This is the data seven or data science? Data science, okay. All right, so th these guys are gonna paste the link here in a second. All right, thank you. We are five minutes over, but hey, go home, play with your chatbot. <laughs>